Honestly, I think that a heavily thematic carnival style drop tower is one of the weirdest ideas that Disney has ever had. But that being said, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout in Disney's California Adventure and the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror over at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Florida are two of my all-time favorite rides. But which is better? Disney's MGM Studios, now just Disney's Hollywood Studios, opened in 1989 as the third park of the Walt Disney World Resort. When it opened, there wasn't a whole lot to do. It was kind of geared towards film production and backlot tours and shows and things of that nature. However, shortly after opening, the park underwent a huge upgrade, uh, and through a weird series of events, Disney acquired a license to CBS's The Twilight Zone, which then led to the creation of The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, which opened in 1994. Disney's California Adventure over in California opened in 2001 and it was kind of a similar story where the park wasn't really loved when it first opened, so they needed to throw some big attractions at it. And after the success of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror in Florida, they opened a slightly lesser but very similar version of the ride in 2004 over in Disney's California Adventure. It didn't last too long though the ride recently shut down in 2017 to make way for the very controversial reskinning upgrade change thing of the ride to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, which opened later that same year in 2017. The question still stands, however, which ride is better? Was it a good idea to shut down Tower of the Terror? Tower of the Terror? Tower of the Terror? The question still stands though, which ride is better? We're starting this fight outside. Let's, let's take it outside and duke it out. Starting with the exterior of the rides. The exterior for the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout ride is kind of strange. It's a big tower still. They just rethemed the Tower of Terror, but they put on this orange and red metal and pipes going everywhere and satellite dishes. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's kind of got that sci-fi theme, um, but I think it's a little weird looking. It's a little out of place. Now, obviously the Hollywood backlot is becoming a Marvel themed land. So once that happens, it is totally possible that the Guardians Tower will look in place instead of out of place. But it still stands that from the entrance of the park in Buena Vista Street, it's weird to see this orange rectangle looming over the horizon. It doesn't really match with the sight lines where the Tower of Terror still looked in place behind Buena Vista Street when it was there. The Tower of Terror over in Florida though at Disney's Hollywood Studios is really well themed after a Spanish 1930s style hotel. Uh, it fits theming really well, it's very immersive and historically accurate in a way, yet that big lightning strike that you can clearly see on the building is like, hmm, what happened there? That's a little strange, a little spooky scary, so I'm gonna go check it out. And that is why I think for the exterior, Tower of Terror takes the first point. So now you've decided to wait in the standby line, which is a questionable choice considering that fast passes are always better for e-ticket attractions, but since round two is going to be looking at the queue of the ride, you've made a good choice. Guardians of the Galaxy has one of the coolest queues I think Disney has ever made. It's really, really immersive. I love just looking at Tavon, the collector's collection, which is what the building is. Right when you go into the line and you're outside in some switchbacks, it's already very cool. Disney has gathered some of the strangest plants I've ever seen, and these are live, living earth plants, mind you, that look totally alien, uh, but they're somehow growing them here in the California climate, but they've got little plaques that say they're from a strange planet or whatever. They're part of the collector's collection, these plants. Uh, so already it's very cool, but then once you get inside the building, you've got the collector's collection, which is 
It's really cool. It's exciting to look at. There's a lot of movie props, references, um, just cool sci-fi artifacts and things like that, all with the little descriptions. One problem I have with this part of the queue, though, is that it has the, the movie playing in the main lobby of the queue there um, with the, the Guardians, the actual actors from Guardians, which I think is pretty cool. But that is a very long film, and you're in that part of the queue for a very short amount of time. In fact, they queue most people up outside, and then you kind of just rush through the main queue. Um, when in reality, I would love to spend the majority of my time waiting in line in that room. So it, it kind of bums me out, but it's still a very cool queue. Tower of Terror, however, in Florida, has one of the most immersive queues I can possibly imagine. Where Guardian of the Galaxy queue is very fun, Tower of Terror is very immersive. It really looks like you just stepped into a hotel that was abandoned in 1930. It's very realistically decrepit, spider webs, uh, what is it, stecco coming off the walls and you can see the bricks underneath. It, it, it's very cool. And this was probably the hardest point for me to assign, but my personal preference is that spooky, immersive atmosphere that the Tower of Terror provides. So I'm gonna have to give point number two to the Tower of Terror as well. The queues don't just stop there, though. The next room of the ride is a pre-show in both rides that sets up the story for the entire attractions. Now, when I first heard that Guardians of the Galaxy was going to be taking over Tower of Terror in California, one of my initial concerns was how, how in the heck and heck and heck are they going to make a cohesive story that fits the Guardians of the Galaxy in with a drop tower ride? It didn't make any sense to me, but by golly, they've kind of done it. I wouldn't say it's a cohesive, perfect, flawless story by any means, but it actually works really well. And it's really fun uh, entering that pre-show room with the whole scan your hands thing, um, setting you up as a visitor of Tavon's collection. And then you get in that room and obviously Rocket Raccoon is there. It's a pretty awesome animatronic. He's talking to you making you an active part of the story. It's really fun to be a participant in the ride. I think the pre-show is really well done. The original pre-show though, in the same sort of room in the library of the Tower of Terror, features a video clip that has Rod Serling in it, the guy, the host of the Twilight Zone series. Now the scariest thing about this is that prior to the ride's opening, Rod Serling had been dead for two decades. Anyway, it's really well done. Uh, it's a super cool, cheesy, but perfectly Twilight Zone-esque pre-show that sets up the story for the ride. Again, it's another not flawless, kind of nonsensical story, but in the frame of the Twilight Zone, it is totally realistic as an actual episode of the Twilight Zone that would have came out. So I think it's really well done and a good a mix of a good a mix of uh, creepy and funny and uh, it's just kind of really well done. But I do think Guardians of the Galaxy has the better pre-show. It's more fun, it's more lively, it has the animatronics and all in all it's really well done. So Guardians of the Galaxy takes the point for the pre-show. Would you believe me if I told you the queue keeps going? And in fact, we are just now entering the bulk of the queue where you'll probably do most of your waiting to ride the ride. We're in the boarding room slash boiler room, whatever you want to call it. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout in California Adventure didn't change a whole lot for this room from when it used to be Tower of Terror. It still very much feels like the Tower of Terror basement boiler room. Um, they added some new lighting, some new little things to look at. Uh, my personal favorite thing is that they added the original Harold the Yeti from the Matterhorn. He's standing there like, oh, I'm Harold the Yeti. Um, and that's pretty cool. I like homages and references and, and, and just little secrets. Uh, back to old Disney attractions. So I really love that. And then you also do scan your hands one more time before you board. But all in all, it's kind of an underwhelming area. This Compared to the rest of the queue, it's kind of lame. Tower of Terror though is not a whole lot better. It, it, it's again very immersive as a, as a boiler room with brick walls and pipes and coal and furnaces and all, all the works. Um, and my favorite thing about the Tower of Terror version of that section of the queue is that they have some of the best cast members that Disney has to offer there. They are more in character than any cast members I can think anywhere else in the park, maybe Haunted Mansion in a similar way, but they're 
creepy, and I've had some that are just funny, and some that do things like slam the door as you're boarding the ride. I mean, they just do whatever they want to look like creepy Twilight Zone folk. Um, ultimately, though, the rooms aren't too much different, so for this boiler boarding room area, I'm gonna have to call it a tie. And finally, we have made it to the ride experience itself. You're buckled in your elevator for some reason with a seats and buckles in it, and you're off. You're ready to go. Guardians of the Galaxy has a super, super fun ride experience where Tower of Terror builds a lot of tension and suspense. Guardians of the Galaxy just keeps it light and fun, but still immersive. Uh, during the ride, you've got screens projecting random different scenes uh, featuring the Guardians getting into mayhem and crazy monsters going around to Vaughn's collection. It's really fun and there's always a different song playing. I think it's one of six songs that are classic rock songs that will be playing in the background. The characters are, are making jokes and everyone's screaming and honestly it's one of those rides that you're just laughing the whole time. Um, it's just a good time. It's a fun experience. Fun ride. Uh, the element of randomness is, is always very welcome in a ride where it's a little different every time. You can see something new that you haven't seen before. So it's a fun ride. They turned a drop tower into something just incredibly unique. Like there's nothing like it. Um, so it's really well done. Tower of Terror though. Okay, this is gonna be a little different. You buckle up and you go up to a floor and you see the scene, you know, the people standing in the hallway and suddenly your elevator starts moving down the hallway. Now it never did this in the California version of the ride, which is why, mainly why it was a wildly inferior version of the Tower of Terror. You're going down this hallway and the lights dim and there's stars and, and while you reach the end of the hallway, a, a line appears and a door opens and it's so dark but your eyes are attracted it's the fifth dimension the twilight zone and it is so well done it just gives me chills thinking about it like you really lose track of what is real it's like you're really entering the twilight zone in a way that is just impossible to describe so here's what you might hate me for just because of this hallway alone tower of terror is getting a bonus point i'm gonna cool bonus point for tower of terror but here's the thing, after all that setup and all that amazingness, once you finally get to the drop part of the ride, the ride part of the ride though for Tower of Terror, I gotta say the ride itself, once you're going up and down while fun, is kind of the worst part of the whole experience of Tower of Terror. It's just dark and there's some noises and you're dropping and it's fun and after all the suspense, to finally have that suspense release when you first drop, is exciting but the ride itself is not nearly as fun as Guardian's ride itself. So for the ride experience as a whole, Guardians of the Galaxy gets the point. Well, we have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. Tower of Terror in Walt Disney World is ultimately, in my opinion, the better ride. And this episode, I'm expecting to get quite a bit of, of controversy, maybe the most dislikes since I talked about Space Mountain. And I, I just wanna say, this was super, super difficult to me. And in fact, up till about 10 minutes before recording, I was thinking Guardians of the Galaxy was going to win. I was thinking I was gonna give them the point for the queue, but then I was watching videos and really trying to get myself in the mindset of the attractions again. And I just said, huh, it's gotta be Tower of Terror. It's gotta be the original ride. Now, I gotta say, Guardians of the Galaxy was the right move. Um, the Guardians of the Galaxy ride is much better than the same version of the Tower of Terror that it used to be. So switching it in California from Tower of Terror to Guardians was the right move. But when it's compared to Florida's superior version of the Tower of Terror, it's gotta be Tower of Terror. So tell me what you think below. Do you agree with me? Do you hate me? Do you wanna punch me or do you wanna hug me? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Tower of Terror wins. Tell me what you would like to see for the next versus. I'm always confused um, where the button's popping up. I don't even wanna think about it today. So wherever that eye is, take the poll. What's the next versus gonna be? And in the comments, did I get this one right? I will see you in two weeks, uploading still every other Saturday. But until then, just have a, just a wonderful time. Just have a good, you know, if you're having a not good day, have a good day. If you're having a good day, have a great day. 
just, you know, just the Bram fade out the video now, start the music. Um, let's just end this um, because, uh, oh man, yeah, awesome.